I think I, th I think it's safe to say it's been the best first three months of video games, maybe in my lifetime. And I'm worried that mm. we're going to pay for it somehow, <laughs> karmically speaking. And I don't know if that means just like October, November, December, all the big releases are going to be absolute <gasps> dog shit or... Wait, 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 um, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But do you believe that the way karma works is yes. that if something nice happens to you, you have to be punished for it. I think it does work that way as well. No, like it's, that's it's the not... opposite. No, no, no. no. I, listen, I've been, I've been, a, I've striven to be a good boy my whole life, and so as a good boy, I got Breath of the Wild. But there's lots of very bad boys that also played Breath of the Wild. You know what I mean? And so maybe that means that, oh. um, so like, what, whatever the fuck, Call, Call of Duty, sure, twenty or whatever is going to be really bad. So the idea it's is hurt you most of all. Yeah, I mean, most of all, because I got to get in there with my fucking, my fucking bong squat buddies. Squat up. <laughs> squat up with my bong buddies nice and shot. shoot all the guys Prestige in the Prestige the hell out of that game. Are yeah. you Prestige making a armor. case for better people in this world would mean just more better games? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Just, like, get together. This is my whole thing as a gamer, mm -hmm. is, like, if yeah. we get together and we do it better, the games will get better. And that's just it. Yeah, that's just it. If you complain, <laughs> if you complain about games not being as good as when you were younger, you have to take a lo a long look in the mirror and say, "Am I as good a person? Am I as good? Probably if not. I was better collectively. We would all be getting better video games. That's games karma. used to be games used to be so much better on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, probably. How what what's your fucking story? How cool have you been since middle school? Probably not. I bet. But you've taken some dark twists and turns. I'm just saying, look inside. Look inside. Look inside. Especially the... if you found yourself on the internet saying those words. Yeah. Look inside. Make that change. Make that change. My name is Justin McRoy, and I know the best game of the month. My name is Griffin McRoy, and I actually do know the best game of the month. That's not a joke. My name is Chris Plant, and I think we all know the best game of the month already. <laughs> My <laughs> name is Russ Farshick, and it's probably Zelda. <laughs> wow, spoilers. You didn't wow. even let Justin finish the intro before you spoiled it for everybody. You finish the <laughs> intro. Folks, video games have come a, a long way since Pac-Man, and we're here to... <laughs> Check all of that out. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember, yeah, back in my day, we played a game called Legend of Zelda, Valerie. You remember this one? A little mm -hmm. uh, squirt wandering around outside in a forest. That was a video He's game in my day. Around, he he uh, got he would get sick and he would eat fairies to get better. And he had a red <laughs> he had a red drink that got him all his hearts back. I loved it, Valerie. This, loved this game. This old man gave him a sword, which seems a little reckless. He, he would find these kid. magic. You'd find these magic triangles and eat them for strength. So I love it. Uh, it was inspired by Shigeru Miyamoto's childhood spent exploring caves by his own. This guy's, really, <laughs> this guy's really in the know, this fictional character. <laughs> I'm a super plugged in otaku, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best season. We know what the best game is going to be this month already. <laughs> but we're going to go through the whole thing. We're going to do the whole stupid stupid thing we'll do that one last uh -huh. yeah i think, um, I think that's let's, let's spend like the first half of this show doing the other three and then the, the back half talking about zelda it's because i think we can go real long thing on that. that makes sense um before we get to that any honorable mentions anybody played some stuff that we're not talking I mean, about <laughs> it's almost <laughs> like we're talking about honorable mentions for the first half of the show so i don't necessarily know <laughs> well they're I mean, good games i mean is this the part where we talk about mass effect did anybody, uh, did no. anybody give that one a, give that one a spin? I mean, no, I played it. I don't think it deserves an honorable mention. Uh, let me let's spend two minutes talking about Mass Effect. Why is it such okay. a failure, Russ? Uh, look, I'm going to be <laughs> straight with you. I played for two hours, so I am by no means an expert. But I honestly believe if you play a game for two hours and you're mis you're having no no fun with it, like it, do I do not owe this game eight or ten hours to get into the groove. I'm sorry. It's um, it just I, I was playing on a PS4 and it was running at like 15 frames a second. And that <laughs> that is inexcusable. I'm sorry. Like there's no justification for that whatsoever. I, um, I I'm I'm on board with with 
I'm on board with you. I'm certainly at a point now where like my my gaming time is just like non-existent. I like, get I have to if I want to play uh, Persona, I have to like stay up after my family has gone to sleep and like play it until I get too tired to be awake anymore. And that's like the only free kind of gaming hours I have. So I certainly don't have time to dedicate to playing a game that I'm not enjoying, especially one that this is not one like, um, you know, final fantasy 13 or whatever. That's like after 20 hours, it gets good. I have not heard anything to that effect. Arthur kind of half said that, but even Arthur was like, like you really probably don't agree with me. We haven't answered Justin's. We haven't answered Justin's question. I, I've been playing it on PC, which like doesn't have those frame rate issues, but it it's 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 such a disappointment for me. Like there's some there's some good like performances in there, but they are performing some really bad writing. Like really, really not not yeah, good. And, very ham fisted writing. And everyone looks like mutants. Even the, the people that are not meant to look like mutants. Look and like that, mutants. that's been like. I think there's a lot of folks who just kind of think that's like a meme or whatever. It has, it, it, I can't fucking, I can't fucking like get into the game because it's, it's astonishing how bad everybody looks. Yeah, but yeah, what it's really hard kiss. to like, right, uh, well. Yes. My favorite theory about why they look the way they look, and this is coming, this is wrong. This is coming from a, a child's perspective on how games get made. But when the, ter- when the characters kiss, it looks really good. <laughs> and so I think maybe they developed a good kissing technology and then tried to walk it backwards. And that's why it looks like whenever anybody's trying to say a sentence like, oh, no, my father, when like their mouth is moving in a way that like a kiss is happening with an invisible ghost. Um, but like, I don't know. It's just like within the first 30 minutes, like you're this this pioneer hero of legend and everybody calls you by your title and you're putting together a team and like it feels like the most bioware ass like carbon copy like shit ever and i just man yeah. i i didn't I mean, enjoy weird, i didn't enjoy yeah, a I, second of the time that i spent with it I yeah was, the weird I was thing i think bioware does really well at small stories and they never lean into that except so so the only game that i think really best example is this there have been others but i think mass effect 2 is a game i played a ton and the best stories in mass effect 2 were the side stories where you go off and you have a little moment with one other character and it's like interesting and like you learn backstory and you care about them um i mean i liked the old republic games those are still my favorite i think games that bioware has made the uh old republic mmo 10 years at this yeah point. i know the, the old republic mmo is also really good about this because and, and that was by virtue of the fact that it was an mmo so you aren't the one pathfinder hero of legend put together yeah. um and so like i don't know i feel like it benefited like that but i got it it just like it just i don't uh, it's, it's not just a good. mess and it's sad it's because mess. i wish that game was going to be good because i really do like the mass effect games overall but man woof um, woof um buggers i want to take-, take a moment to talk about um one two switch because no. okay <laughs> really yeah wow really okay um i've Let's been traveling it. a lot lately and it is a very cool it's i i i want to celebrate one two switch more as like a proof of concept but it's a very cool idea that you can have a sort of like portable little party game that you could just pop out of your bag and play like we were kind of stuck in a hotel room um, a couple of times before our Portland show and we decided to uh, bust out one, two switch. And it was a very fun way to kill 20 minutes without having to like set up a TV yeah, and, sure. and all that garbage. And like a lot of the games are not great in one, two switch, but a lot of them are pretty fun. Like we had a good time with it and it killed 20 minutes. And it's like, I feel like for the kind of, the portable application of that, that's really all it needs to do. And there are many better applications right. of it, but I'm, I, conceptually I got it's a very, it feels very um, different. The ability to like have that experience on the go in yeah. your bag that you just pop it out and play it. I got a lot more excited for like other multiplayer games that are going to come out. Like I, I agree with what you said that like as a proof of concept, it's pretty sick. Like, when uh jackbox the jackbox party pack is coming to switch like that'll be fucking great totally let me get, um, get joust get let me get joust up in there but i get joust we, up on there let me get like overcooked and all those yeah, overcooked all those jams. Is gonna be amazing i think we already have what what made one to switch so starkly bad for me is that we already have exactly what you're talking about which is a fantastic local party game it's going to be one of the games as that we bring as an actual entry so like 
it's what you, it's what weird you, to me that I'd ever be in a scenario where I like know that we have this other game that I know is like you can just say its name. It's Snipper Clips. Yeah, Fucking sure. Snipper Clips. The, is the other good light switch game. better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, but, once you, once but, you switch, once you switch has a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. One two switch should have been a pack in game and like agree. I don't. Completely. I don't want to get. I don't want to get mired in like a conversation about like what things should cost. But like this is this. It is not. It, it, historically speaking other even other nintendo consoles have been packed with way 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 better like proof of concept games like this that were what like light years better like uh well, Wii sports you make, and you can nintendo make land argument, you can make the argument i think that i i, I had the same initial thought but then after spending a lot of time with one two switch my current thought is um well, maybe they didn't that. necessarily want everybody yeah, sure, to check yeah. this one out. <laughs> maybe they didn't. Maybe this isn't the best show pony for uh, for uh, the one the old Switch because um, it definitely feels that way. And yeah, like, we all I have mean, that sense. Like uh, this guy. Now that does not explain why it's not twenty dollars in that. Well, case. and also I would say like they made it the very first game during their Switch presentation. Like it was the first thing they showed at that like big reveal. That was uh, they thought bad. this was gonna be. Wii Sports 2, and if they didn't, it wouldn't have been. Well, there. Wii Sports 3. Wii Sports 3. Yeah. Right. Um, I I want to give a shout out to Robo Recall. It's just a really, really, really fucking good shooter on is Oculus that Rift. Out, like final version is out? Yeah, it's out and it's free if you own an Oculus. Cool. And it is like it's good as hell. It's just like a really stylish shooter um where you uh kind of use the stick to teleport around different spots, but there's not like set spots you teleport to, so you're just like on a city street and there's rampaging robots all over and you have two holsters at your side and you can customize like what guns you keep in there and you can upgrade the guns and change them around uh and then you have two guns on a uh, back holster so you have to like reach up over your shoulder and grab these like shotguns from out behind your back um and blast your way through these these waves of robots as you look around this city and there's like special challenges where like um a portal will appear and you have to shoot robots into the portal but the great thing about the game is you um don't have to use the guns you can like grab a robot with one arm like grab them by the chest and then grab their arm with another uh arm with with one of your other hands it uses the the touch controllers and you like rip their arm off and then you can beat them apart with their arm and then throw it at somebody else um and like grab yeah, their gun out of the air it feels amazing it feels like fucking it great and you can do parts yeah. like if there's like drones flying around you can grab like you can tear their gun like arm off and then use that as like a weapon against other things you can um like grab an enemy like as somebody's shooting at you and block the bullet like with them and kill them like that there, there's tons and tons and tons it's it's kind of um super hot like in that like it's very tactile and everything feels like great and if you can think of something like it probably works um it is it's it's one of my favorite um rift games all right now it is so fucking slick Did anybody yeah play i think it's john more silly and, on vive? sorry do you yeah. play the john wick thing on vive i have not yet no, no i don't i, I, I heard it was pa- not good oh. yeah i kind of packed up my vive i i really only have room for one virtual reality experience <laughs> in my office and um the rift had super hot so them's the breaks and you can also can't you like hack the uh oculus to like play vibe games still uh yes you can so i i haven't but you can do that yeah i the other the other thing works too by the buyer <laughs> um any other honorable mentions we should mention near you still have to buy them i'm not a pirate Near, oh yeah, yeah. Near yeah. is the game I wish I had more time with, and also I think like the ultimate example of something we talked about. I think last month about uh, Japanese developers, uh, all these like wild ideas that I think people were sour on, finally clicking. Like yeah, I, every sure. every near review I read was like, it takes a, a while to get into it, but it's great, and there you have to play it like five times. And each time is great. There are invisible walls everywhere. They're great invisible walls. Like <laughs> it's it's all these things that people I, I thought hated, but uh in in the world of this game, they seem to really dig. And and I've played a bit of it. I wish I'd played more, but I've been busy with a game that we'll be talking about next month. But yeah, can we when not I talk about it, that? I loved. We can, can we can talk about that game, right? I, we can talk about the first, like, I, I don't know, the first dungeon. It's, perso- it's persona, it's, it's, persona stuff. Yeah, we're going to talk about Persona yeah. 5 a lot yeah. next month. Um, I, um, um, wait, before we move on, I want to mention something about Nier. Um, and apparently, I heard that there's a Justin McElroy Easter yeah. egg in Nier. Oh, man. 
There is Just, technically speaking, from what I do you I want to talk heard. about it? Do you want to clear the do you want to clear um, the air, squash the beef? <laughs> uh one time I took an omega dump on near and it was well deserved. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> The original they, Nier. We're, we're extra, laughing. It was spicy. The, <laughs> we're having a laugh here. But them, you guys remember what I used to say? Welcome to another Justin McElroy spicy Omega dump. Yeah, yeah I remember um, that. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're having fun. A, we're having fun here. But Justin's got, a, I would say, a fair amount of shit from uh, internet communities online uh-huh. because of this thing he did to Nier. They had a garbage mini game, and I said as much, and it ruined the game for me because it was so fucking bad. And I was right, and anyone who says differently is wrong. Moving on, um, it was a fishing mini game that sucked the moon right out of the fucking sky. <laughs> and I made a video about how bad it sucked, and it was right and true. And as an acknowledgement of how right and true it was, the um, in near there's fishing again. It doesn't seem to have much near, point. Uh, near automata, we've not said the full near automata. 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 Sure. Automata. 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 <laughs> uh, in near automata. Uh, there's a fishing thing that doesn't seem to do much good, but if you catch a mackerel and you eat it, it's like boots you back to the main screen, like kill you or kicks you back to the main screen or something. Cause mackerel sounds like McElroy, um, which is also true and good. And I think everybody's right. Like I was right to take a huge dump on Nears fishing because it was so garbage <laughs> and they were right to dump redump back on me with the Pretty good pun that McElroy does sound like mackerel <laughs> in a very true way. And the That's fact they were able shit. to tie that back into fishing, I think is very good and funny. Um, but yeah, I guess that's in. I really want to mirror automata. I really want to really play it. It looks like my shit. Exactly. I just literally did not have a free. Um, I, my backlog is like, I, my, my I backlog gotta, is on. Before dope you, as hell. Before we move on, I have to put like a, a PS on that. Uh, that is going completely by hear, 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 hearsay yeah. from other people. Like I, it may be a coincidence, and I, which would be probably the most. If I didn't allow for that, that that bit of sunlight there, and it would be the most embarrassing thing. If like this game's talking about me, and, and it's definitely <laughs> not. So I just want to allow for that. Like that may be the case. It may just be random. I don't know, but it seems it seems intentional, which I think is hysterical. Um, yeah, no, it's a real thing. I'm looking at a video now. There's an NPC, and the NPC is named Jackass, and says, so there's this thing called a mackerel, and apparently eating it has a horrible effect on androids. Uh, I'd love to see what it does, so go ahead and chow down. And then he gives you a mackerel, and then I'm looking at this video, and you eat it, and instantly, yeah, it drops you right back to the... Having consumed the mackerel, it didn't take long for the android's bodily fluids Mm -hmm. to congeal. Muscle rigidity and paralysis soon followed. Uh, so, it was so, it was good though. The android thought as consciousness faded, exquisite even. No wonder humans used to eat them. And then that's it. Shows you the credits really fast. It shows you the whole game's credits in like a second. It, I, I mean, it. I will say that the, the waters are fairly muddy on this particular joke. Like I, yeah. I don't think, but uh, but I mean, I don't know. I think it's funny um, either way. That's fucking really good stuff. Um, I really want to play near Automata. I really want to play more Neo. There's like there's like five games that I just didn't have time to. I want to play all the Resident Evil Seven DLC. Like, I'm oh. playing really really good games, but I'm playing half of the really good games that I want to play, and I don't know when I'm gonna have time to check all the of the of my July. Queue out. Yeah, I guess Sorry, July. I, I'm gonna name. I'm just gonna name one other game really really quick. That fast RMX on Switch. Oh yeah, it's like the cheapest game on Switch. It's 19.99, and it is really 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 good. You like um, it? I really, really like it. The hook is like it's a wipeout style racing game, but the boost, uh, there's boost boards all over uh, the tracks and they're different colors and you have to switch to match the colors to be able to use the boost. But you have to um, switch? You have to switch. See, yeah. see switch. Um, but I don't, I don't understand. Like, it sounds like wipeout, to be honest. Listen. Just, is I'm it, recommending it's fine if it's wipeout. I just want it's to establish basically wipeout. But, okay, but it's it's good. Okay, it's really. Is good. there split screen in that? Um, I believe there is, and there's definitely local multiplayer without Wi-Fi, uh, which I because I'm curious because I have I've yet to see a split screen Switch game, split and I'm Switch. really curious split switch and I'm really curious whether on that tiny tiny screen you could actually have a playable experience in a split screen environment. Pardon. Probably not. Maybe. You'd no, have to really not. be cozy. All right, who wants to start? I'll start. I'll start. No, yeah, oh, go my God. Go for it, Plant. 
Okay. Uh, so the game that I am bringing is... I, I don't know if small is the right word, but it's like a small word puzzle game for mobile called uh, Type Shift. And I have a feeling that you have played this game, Freshik. Am I correct? I have played this game. Um, so the way it works, it is by Zach Age, who has done a number of games that I think have appeared in old besties, like Spell Tower. Um, Ridiculous oh, Fishing yeah. probably did. Ridiculous Fishing. He... Bad Chess we didn't do, but bad chess would have probably if we were doing really bad chess i think we, I think we actually talked about really bad chess in Briefly. a previous besties this this year yeah. yeah yeah um but type shift the way it works is you have uh a se- row of columns uh it sounds weird but each one is like uh say one column is four letters uh a through z uh another one with five letters another one with three another one with however many and you there's a central line, and you oh try to God. line up these columns to make a word. It's really hard to describe. This, I've, even I've played super this simple. game, and, and that, I mean, I don't know that I could do better, but that is like an impossible way to. Yeah, I, I, can, wait, 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 I, I can describe how, to, how, how, you, how it works. You know, when you get the, like, uh, the lock on a briefcase, how you have to uh, line up the numbers? Yeah, or make... like in Price is Right with the big wheel. No, no, that doesn't help anyone. So, like, the numbers <laughs> on the briefcase, it, imagine that with uh, letters for each kind of thing that you adjust. So you're lining up words. And right. there are two ways you can play it. One is just to find a series of words. You could go for the dollar, or you could oh just Oh my gosh, go you're killing score. me. So you can line up and find uh, as many words as possible with each set of tiles. Or there's another one where, kind of crossword-esque, it gives you a clue, like, knock, knock. And then you would find the word jokes by lining up your tiles. Okay. Um, and it's really simple. That is not what I find like the most interesting thing about the game. The game is very fun. It's like a good way to uh, just poke at your phone in the past five minutes. But the really interesting thing is as you're kind of, like finding these words, you kind of surprise yourself and what you discover to actually be a word. And then at the end of each round, it shows you all the words that you found and you click one. And it takes you to Merriam-Webster's website and shows you the definition of the word that you found. And this is why it's just kind of brilliant in terms of uh, marketing or business is the project was actually done in collaboration with Merriam-Webster. Oh, shit. Uh, So they designed basically an addictive bubble wrappy thing that is like a fine, fine game that teaches you words and sends i imagine gobs of web traffic to their dictionary uh that's, that's like insidious I, that's like more clever than i want dictionaries to be there yeah i mean I it mean, doesn't it doesn't force you to go to their no, website it's just it, it you it it uses the curiosity gap to get you to do it and and which is like what makes it good also for learning because you're doing it voluntarily uh I, I I think it's so smart. I and I I've definitely enjoyed much of my time uh f- trying to discover new random words and then going and looking up whatever these things can be. I I, I yeah. enjoy it as a learning tool almost more than I enjoy it as a game. So, uh here's what I was like that's yeah, I've done that too where I like look up, I don't know what this word means and stuff like that and you get a little kick out of that. Where uh, the reason I think this game is so special for me is so there's as plant kind of described there's two modes there's the mode that's like anagrams essentially where you're moving the letters around and making as many words as you can out of this combination of letters and then there's um clue mode it's called which is essentially kind of a twist on a crossword puzzle that's what i just where said you fool I, I understand you just said it, but I think you poorly described it. Oh to my be god! Get him! Get him! Drag him! Drag him! You also referred to it as yeah. anagrams. It's Love this old like nasty besties. Nasty anyway, besties. <gasps> clue mode is what I want to talk about for a second. What Go makes on. this interesting, and it does sort of apply to anagrams, but I think it's more applicable to clue mode, mm-hmm. is because the it will remove letters that are fully used within a single crossword. So, for example, if you know for from oh, like for the remaining clues there's no r's at the beginning of the word um it'll just get rid of that r and there won't be an r anymore so then you know oh all the rest of the words are only these possible three letters for example and by using that you can like put you can use kind of like interesting word building techniques like 
all right, I know the second to last letter is a Y for sure. I don't know what the uh, last letter is, but how many le- you know letters could possibly follow a Y, for example? And th- uh, some of this obviously is used in normal crossword puzzles, this sort of strategy. But because it is literally telling you there are definitely no R's left, it removes that kind of X factor of like, do I have this wrong or do I have this right? And it makes the clue puzzles feel like this really cool progression where you build momentum as you're solving stuff faster and faster as you remove all the variables. I'm playing it right now and it's it's really good. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I, I mean, really to, dig it. to build off your thing with the crossword, what I think is really fascinating about it is uh, in like tech and boring startup things, people talk all the time about, hey, how do we take this idea that existed on this one form? So like crosswords are pen and paper. It right disrupt how do we make it how do we make it mobile and the idea is usually like well it's the same thing it just has a touch interface and i think what's fascinating about this is it does a lot of the same things with your brain as the crossword has a general generally similar idea but it it feels like it could only exist on your phone yeah Yeah. and it's also i think probably the only iteration of a quasi crossword like game that you can play with one hand uh, which I know Griffin prioritizes with baby dealings. It's true. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's terrific. Uh, I've been playing it um, a ton as my Fire Emblem stamina recharges. I play that. <laughs> um, Zach Gage's hit rate is also wild. It's insane. Like, yeah. That cat has made, has made so many like excellent, excellent games that I just like yeah. adore. It's wild. Well, I think he, yeah, I was going to say, I think he has the luxury of, of, the fact that one of his earlier games, Spell Tower, was so successful that he can be really careful with what he does. So like someone that needs to, you know, oh, I need to make rent this month might need to put a game out. But I think he can be really patient and prototype and try a bunch of different things. I actually remember seeing a prototype of this game like a year and a half or two years ago. And so it was like, garbage, yeah. you think. And <laughs> what you're saying. Right. No. And he, so he can take his time. And I think that makes a big difference. I, yeah, I think I think the other thing with Zach is he he started out as an artist and he is that rare person you meet who is brilliant as an artist but i think kind of enjoys the idea of selling his things and like took on word puzzle games because they are mainstream and popular culture and i think he's fascinated with the idea of hey this is a thing that traditionally would not be seen as a work of art or especially creative how can I make it that? And I, I, I think that's admirable because I, I, there's, especially right now, there's kind of this weird, like, AAA and uh, indie are separated vibe uh, that it's nice to see somebody, I think, that kind of splits the difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's move on to the next okay. one. Yes. I'll, I'll go. My game is called Everything. Um, it's a game made by a gentleman named David O'Reilly. Um, you might know his work from a game called Mountain, where you there was like a mountain and it spun around and you had could like do things to the mountain. I did uh, not. This, I did not care for Mountain. I know a lot of people <laughs> were into Mountain, but I got but, it and I was like, I don't get you, Mountain. I don't. So I was kind of expecting the same thing with everything, which is to say, like we see a lot of artsy games and they're like, eh. You know, I get the idea. It's interesting. <laughs> Can you use maybe a narrower brush there, pal? At least no, fucking artsy all, games all with all the art like in them. Art. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. That's like funny. A, something that wouldn't like doesn't painting. necessarily engage. Point you to shit. Fuck yeah, I'm bored though. <laughs> How much I'm three dollars? What the fuck? <laughs> if you're gonna make a game like that, I think it should engage emotionally. And a lot of these games don't land for me. Uh, they yeah. end up being like a lot of pretty colors and that's about it. Um, everything I was fully expecting to be that case, which is like, here's the premise. You can play as everything from an op- oxygen molecule to a galaxy to a llama to a landmass. You can be everything. And that sounds very ambitious and not necessarily super fun or interesting. It's just like kind of an interesting experiment, like a something Molyneux might say in an interview. And you'd be like, yeah, Molyneux, you're a jerk. And then it would never come about. <laughs> Shut up, jerk. Shut up, jerk. But there's something that clicks with this game. Um, and I, I'm not 100% sure what it is. But I think what it is... So the, the 
I think what the game is trying to impart, and it does this pretty directly by having quotes from this philosopher named Alan Watts, um, talking about the scale of the universe and how the universe is kind of like unfathomably large to the point where you don't really know, like, like the size of a speck of dirt versus the size of a galaxy. Like it's hard to sort of wrap your head around that. And this game really perfectly kind of encapsulates that concept, um, in an interactive way, which is really impressive. Um, and, uh, I, I don't know. I, after I played it for like two hours, just like, playing like hands-on playing it and i was like wow this is like kind of clicking with me and i get why it was made and why it's interesting and then we did an experiment at work because i found out after i completed what's known as the tutorial but it really like takes you from you know the building blocks of life to the end of the universe essentially and then once you get there it says the tutorial completed and it's very funny but once you beat that, it unlocks this autoplay mode um, where you can basically customize all of the settings in the game. Okay, I was wondering what that what that stream we did was all about. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you can customize all the settings so that the game plays itself, but you can decide like, okay, I want to be able to like the AI will like change characters every three seconds or change um, this feature or change uh you know be able to scale in size as big as you want or as small as you want and it kind of just goes to the point where we left the game running for 24 hours um and you can see there's a four hour stream on our facebook if you want to watch it it is surprisingly interesting to the point where for those four hours where we weren't we were not touching the game at all i think we were around like a thousand concurrent viewers for most of those four hours um just because it is fascinating like it's jumping from suddenly you're like a crayfish but you're the size of a galaxy and like a, a star system like flows into you and then you jump through time and space and it just like it feels like you're walking watching like a really bizarre documentary or like a philip glass movie where uh, you don't you don't know exactly what's going on but it is super like visually engaging um, the way they animate mammals walking around is they like turn like um, I guess like dice. They like, turn like rolling. ninety degrees, yeah, at a time and like kind of roll, yeah. And you can there's a setting that like allows certain animals to like group up. So at one point during the stream, it was like herds of llama, like thirty or sixty llama, spinning through like a desert and then doing like a big dance together, and. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to like really sell it, but um, it. I honestly considered like the next time I have a party at my house, just I will probably on. just put that on on you the TV and, and, not and then passing out the L yeah, passing out the LSD and just like just look at the screen, guys. Yeah. It's it's like super engaging and, and really cool right in this and bowl. Yeah, I um, I, I going up your job. Peter Molyneux thing. I think what I really dig about this game and uh his work in general is it reminds me more of and this is not meant as an insult to the game or his work but peter maladu that whole yes scene of uh coming up with a single tweet that is a game design like riffing on the absurdity of maladu's over promising and what what works so well here is it feels so precise and concise it it's like there was like one idea which it was a very big idea, but he went out and created that thing. Like I'm going yeah, to he lands. It lands really well. That yeah. is everything. And um, how do I do that? Uh, I'm going to, I'm sorry. Should we, can we, do you guys mind if we move on to? Yeah. No, no the next go one. for it. Whatever's next. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about my game, which is snipper clips. It's the other good switch game. When you finish Zelda, you play snipper clips and that is a <laughs> switch. When you own a Switch, you do Zelda until the Zelda runs out, and then you do snipper clips. Or sometimes you do them side by side. It's up to you. A lot of people are saying Blaster Master, and okay, but snipper clips is the second Blaster one. Blaster Master is good, and, and Binding of Isaac's good, uh, but you're right. Snipper I've, clips is... I've bought Binding of Isaac on like 18 different things yeah. at this point. Um, snipper clips is a game. It is meant to be played with two people. You can play it with one person. Don't do that. Oh my God. You can play with four people. Don't do that either. Just two people, you and a loved one. Um, I, I, I had been looking forward to this game for a long time because I watched a. Um, I watched a treehouse presentation where some people played it and it looked fucking hysterical and, uh, it was. And so I was looking forward to it. I made sure I was like, before I even played Zelda, well, uh, when I brought my switch home, like I got this one and I got, uh, what else I get? Shovel Knight treasure chest. 
which is good. I hadn't played the extra Shovel Knight shit, and it's pretty pretty sick. Um, in it, uh, you and a co-op partner play as these little uh, paper characters who are... What's the best way to describe their shape? They're sort of... They are used without the... Gap in the, the middle. Gap. Yeah, they're like an oval with a flat top, right? Um, and the controls for the game are you can run around, you can jump, you can squat, and you can sort of raise... You stand on your tippy toes. Um, yep. And the other thing you can do is press a button and you will cut out whatever you are overlapping on your partner. So um, it, this is another... God, this is like us trying to describe abstract <laughs> like geographical or geometrical concepts um over an audio medium it's not great but just imagine that like you sort of run your round end of your u shape like right into the middle of of the other player well, okay. and you press this and you press the snip button <laughs> family show buy me dinner uh <laughs> if you, yeah uh if you do that and then you press the snip button then you will like cut whatever part of yourself that is overlapping with them so you could have them like lowered down and you just put like your whole body over them and snip and you can cut them very very short or you can cut them into narrow strips uh, and a lot of the game is based around like figuring out how to cut them into the right shape there's a lot of stuff that a lot of puzzles that are just like fill this shape with your bodies and so you have to figure out like okay well there's just a circle in this how do we cut a perfect circle using our our two bodies how do we like do i have to cut something into you and then we use that negative space to cut the other shape into me and um but the best puzzles in the game are um like physical um so there's one where you have to like figure out how to jump in this body of water and scoop up this uh the right fish and then drop it into a basket that the other person's trying to hold open or trying to figure out how to catch a bowling ball as it falls through the ceiling um, and then use your whatever shape you have cut into you to like bring it to a basketball hoop and get it in the hoop um, or one where there's slime coming down from the ceiling and there's like this little mouse trying to run from one side of the screen to the other, but it'll turn around if it gets slime on it. So you have to figure out a way to like capture all this slime um, or one where you have to like cut a hook into yourself and then jump up like into the sky. Oh, and you can stand on your partner's head as long as they have like, a head like a flat end to stand on um so like you get to you have to be cut into a hook and then stand on your partner's head and then both of you jump up in the air to try and hook this balloon and pull it down while your partner who you've cut into a sharp shape can like pop it like it's so it's it's it, it's hysterical trying to communicate your geometric desires to the other person um yeah it's it, very it's it, it does require like a lot of vocal interaction with the other person because the there's a lot of that, there's a lot of puzzles where like well, one more example there's one where you guys have to put both both of you have to pull a cactus up out of the ground and it's a cactus with just like spikes at random intervals and so you have to build a shape that can kind of hook onto those spikes and hold the shape up but if at any point one of you isn't holding the spike the cactus will fall all the way back down into the ground so you have to like pull it up and up and up and up and a lot of those puzzles are built around that conceit where if you fuck up for a second you restart completely and like rachel and i played uh through snipper clips and like we had so many of those instances where like just one of us would fuck up and we'd lose all of this progress we'd put into this puzzle and it was like really fucking funny every time like oh what a what a disaster it it basically is the closest experience i don't know if you guys ever did like trust fall or training exercises where like you have to like lift someone through the spider web of ropes and you can yes, only yeah. go through so many times or like that sort of like physics based puzzle that happens in the real world where you're like trust fall type things. And that feels the same here where you, you really have to like plan out what you're doing, but invariably there's one person like fucking around and like yeah. taking chunks out of you. Right. Um, um, which was usually my wife. And, but like, Wow. As in in terms of like having a game that you have with you at all times comes with two controllers because there's two controllers on the it's switch. Brilliant. Yeah. And you can just like use that kickstand and just like put it on a table in an airport. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's I don't so good. I don't want to go too long talking about it because frankly I want to talk about the other stuff we have to talk about, but like it's a great game. My only disappointment, I think Rachel and I beat it over like two or three relatively short session. There's uh, sessions, there's like only really three batches of levels um and i think I get, there are more levels for four players as well for what okay it's worth. well I, I i don't know how much more they could like squeeze out of this idea but i think that they could have gotten just a little bit more like when it ended i was like oh really that's it 
Um, and really, the only reason I felt that way is because I enjoyed my time with it so very, very much. So if you have a Switch and somebody else to play it with, again, you can play it by yourself. And the way you do Don't. that is you like press a button to switch bodies and like it's not fucking fun no. at all. Um, but as a co-op game, it's like really cute and funny and good and you'll like it. Totally. Nice. I know I said um, I wanted to talk about Destiny 2 during the break, but... But you don't? I just don't know if I want to... I don't even know. I don't know. They announced Destiny 2 today. Did you all see? Y- yes. No. They're, I mean, I think it's funny. Speaking as someone who's a fan of Destiny, I think it's funny all the time they spend on that logo, which is like, hey, it's the old logo, but there's a well, giant two fucking behind two behind it. <laughs> what is the... Why don't you all... Since I haven't heard it, why don't you all just give me the... That's it. That's it. I they think just tweeted this picture. Know. Yeah. Um, I got, yeah. I got super... Um, got scooped, huh? So I saw that that ad somebody leaked. I guess they got scooped. Yeah, there was a yeah, GameStop got scooped real bad. thing. I got really like hyphy on Twitter, <laughs> and I got I I made a mistake, which was stating a video game opinion while it was still breaking news on Twitter. Which like, if I ever do that again, like Justin, I just need to send you my Twitter password, and then you, you yeah, just maybe just take my account away from me for a little while because like now just all day I've been dealing with folks. But like, I saw so many so many like uh so many like games people a lot of critics a lot of like developers who like were reacting to this announcement and like the basis of their goof was like destiny lol uh as as if to say like i think there's a lot of people who think of destiny as just like a joke because it was this big like uber hyped up game that didn't really deliver when it first came out and I, it, I don't know, it kind of bums me out that that is what, like, that that is the, that's your, that's your thinking on Destiny. Like, that's your hot take on Destiny is, like, what a, what a joke when. But that's, I mean, I, I, speak, again, speaking as someone who's a fan of this game, I've played a ton of it. I fully understand why that is the, like, general takeaway about Destiny, because generally you only get one shot to get an audience and the vast majority of people who heard about Destiny initially when it first launched, heard about how it was kind of not great. Yeah. And I would agree with that. It was not very good at launch. And you, we can, and, you can go listen to another Besties episode where Russ is right. trying to defend it as his game of the year as, as we all um, tear him Mock tear me. him down. <laughs> um, but I fucking, I really liked what Destiny turned into um, partially, well, mostly because of like them listening to feedback like i don't want to fucking fly around the moon i don't want 90 percent of my time with the game be me flying around the moon looking for helium filaments like yeah um and i think destiny turned into like this really interesting very very good game and i i, I don't know it just like bummed me out that uh, i just saw a lot of folks who were just like destiny 2 huh what a joke and it's like well no that game did get really very 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 good and i also saw a lot of people and this is a fair criticism of like I don't want to spend a bunch of money on expansion packs to like for a game to get good. And I, I, I totally feel that I don't want to get into like a cost to benefit analysis of, of destiny or whatever. But I, I also think that that is a, I wonder if they will go a subscription based model and I know they won't, but I really think it would help like fix a lot of their problems because like, I didn't think there was any problem with spending 40 bucks every year for this huge chunk of new content that I would play for 200 hours instead of paying like 15 bucks a month to, for, for a similarly updated experience. Yeah. I, I, I think what's a little bit of a bummer, but it's just, again, the nature of humanity and especially the games community. If destiny two comes out and gets like nines and tens and great reviews and everyone loves it, there will still be this, uh, to the same extent, like last year's, um, call of duty game was pretty damn good. But I think people decided very early on that they hated space yeah. and they hated a lot of things and they and they made a judgment for themselves and that judgment gets locked in and defines who you are and what your tastes are and stuff like that. So when they hear someone saying, hey, this is good, it runs against what they what they believe in and, I, and that's why they react I, so I, negatively. I, I think what rubbed me the wrong way is like a lot of the like criticism of, of this like completely insubstantial announcement so like really all you're criticizing is your thoughts on destiny one yeah um first of all i did see a lot of people like i can't believe they called destiny two ha 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 it's like what the fuck else were they gonna call it um but like i i i think there's i think there's a really fucking shitty habit and it's not just i'm not saying that this is like 
all games press people or or whatever. I think this sentiment goes branches like way out, way, way, way out to like anybody who plays and consumes games. Um, and I think there was probably a time in my life where I kind of fell prey to it too. But like, I think there's a lot of people who just like get psyched when a big game does bad. Like, I think there's a lot of people who like are psyched out of their minds when Call of Duty is bad just for the like schadenfreude of it. Like, mm -hmm. Well, and it's also like, well, screw those people. Like, I didn't spend my money. I was a smart guy, and I'm going to talk about how smart I was for not spending my money. Like, that's what it comes down to. I honestly right. believe I think there's a, I think there's a lot of people who feel that way about Mass Effect Andromeda, but a lot of that is conflation with folks, like, identifying Bioware's games as having, like, sorry for this terminology, but, like, well, no, a pro progressive, progressive sort of views on on certain things and that always rubs people the wrong way which cool. is awesome and cool and so there's a lot of people who celebrate when a game like that does isn't isn't uh especially great for I, uh nefarious reasons but i think there's also like a lot of people who are just like oh this big major triple a game is bad ha 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 cool i think the I, comparison I with bioshock or not bioshock mass effect goes a little closer to destiny also because you have mass effect 3 being a huge disappointment for a number of people who I think now went it feels like justification. Like, see, I was right the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah. It see, was like, a bad game. Yeah, sure. and and I I think that is kind of similar to this thing that's happening with Destiny. Of, well, I was right. It was bad. It was good that I didn't play any more of it after that first year. And this is going to be terrible too. Um, I I do think though, I think this is a a, a pretty small group of people. I think this is like a really really loud yeah. group of people on Twitter. I, well, then 100% 100, 100 of them tweeted at, at me. I'm, there's a ton of people who think, like, um, you had to pay, uh, you know, 200 bucks for Destiny to get good. And it's like, well, that's not really how it worked. You paid fucking, what, $40 for the Taken King a year after the game came out, and then you played that for a year. And then, you know, eight months later or whatever, the next expansion came out, and you paid 40 bucks for that. And it's like, first of all, that's how every expansion pack model has ever worked. And, yeah, it's more expensive, but, like, this is a, this is a different game than, like another any other shooter here right like i i i a, a yeah. lot of people I mean, are like well, I'm just, of a lot of people are like well i'm not gonna play destiny 2 i'm too busy i'm still gonna be too busy playing overwatch and it's like that's fine that's your tendencies but do understand these are two fucking completely different games i think that destiny has suffered because there isn't this clear delineation of it is an mmo shooter so there's people who like group it in with their inter favorite shooter here and the fact that destiny does this more mmo model shit they're like fuck that and so like this idea that oh you have to keep paying money for this game to keep playing it no way it's like wow you must get angry anytime any mmo is announced fucking ever well like, and those mmos are kind of like going by the wayside like there are not many yeah. subscription based mmos left so i don't think people have that frame of reference anymore there is also i you could point to almost no video games that are triple a video games specifically where if you pay the full retail price for them at launch, they consistently get better over the course of several years. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. No yep. game gets support. The, those expansion packs paid for the main vanilla game to get improved on, yep. which doesn't ever happen. And like, maybe it should have been better at launch, but they were also doing something pretty audacious. And it's not even like you miss, cause there's no, wasn't a monthly fee. So like, Right. I, I don't know. I, I, I but, it, but a person's response to that is like, well, I shouldn't have to pay. I already paid my $60. I already paid my $60. So it yeah. shouldn't have to. One thing is like a lot of the upgrades to destiny that like the, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for of, uh, uh, quality of life upgrades were free. Like those didn't come in the expansion packs. Now well, I, that, and I don't, space, stuff like that. I don't want to, I don't want to like completely defend destiny. Cause I think it did make some bad calls. For instance, there were some expansion packs that when they dropped, um, if you didn't own them, like you didn't have access to the random playlist anymore, which like a lot of people, that was their like main way of playing it. And like, that sucks. That's gross. I'm not defending destiny. And I'm also saying like, if you played vanilla destiny and you're like, I don't want to invest more time into this to, for it to get good or any more money. That's fine too. That wasn't what I was trying to say. Like, all I was trying to say is there's so many fucking snide motherfuckers who are just like <laughs> <laughs> destiny lol. And it's like, that was maybe my, one of my favorite like some of my favorite times playing games in the past decade has been like playing with you chuckle fucks and like the, the, like doing the, doing the raids. And like, I don't know, I played that game so much and I enjoyed a lot of the time that I spent with it. And there's a lot of people who I think just think like, well, that was, that game was a disappointment for everybody who played it. Huh? Like, no, that game did some really interesting shit, I think. And I don't know. I thought, I thought more about destiny 
than any other game. Like over over a period of time, like no game consistently like hooked and then rehooked me. Yeah, uh, like Destiny did. Um, it was great. It's also the most fun I think I've ever had playing an online multiplayer game. Like I played a lot of WoW and I and a lot of like EverQuest and like none of that, none of that even comes close to stacking up to like the the stuff I did in Destiny. Yeah. Um. So I is it time? Yeah, yeah it's time. Now it's yeah. time. Uh, the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is a very good, enjoyable video game. Um, I'm somebody who. I have sort of a weird history with Zelda where uh, there have been a couple that I just have bailed on. Even after trying a couple of times, they just didn't hook me. Like what? I don't want to say because then it's like a whole thing. But Wind Waker. Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword I finished. Wind Waker. No, Skyward Sword I didn't finish. Wind Waker I didn't finish. Um, Twilight Twilight Princess? I used to disparage Majora's Mask a lot uh, because... I hadn't finished it and but eventually I played it on 3DS and that was like a great great place to Fucking play. Fucking super good. Super good game. But Breath of the Wild is it, the the problem with Zelda which is both it's like well no, I'm just going to I was going to say curse and it's boon but it it is just a curse. <laughs> the game is is all it's all been variations on a theme. Like I would say specifically since Link to the Past, I think, is where you. I think Ocarina see. of Time is a much more like, uh, yeah, Link to the Past mm, is. I was like, there's a Link to the d- Past is better. Actually, I like mine mm, I better. Think Majora, I think of Orc Ocarina of Time is more. Mm. Link to the Past is much closer to. What the hell is going on? <laughs> no, like Link to the Past sets up the dungeon boss, get the weapon to beat the boss, eight basic things that you have to. But do. that was in the, the first game. That was in Legend of Zelda on NES. But it's it the. I, I for me, Link to the Past is like structurally be, like a better comparison. I, I don't it's, think it's one of my favorites. It's, I like it more than Ocarina, so I, I that's don't what I'm disagree saying. with you. Yeah, that's, I, that's I, Buck I, Wild. I think the no Link to the Past is the best <laughs> video game. Okay. Ever um. Anywho, it's all been meditations on that theme, and there sure. have been some some uh like it's weird because it, it has been twisted up, like it's been mixed up, like. Uh, Link could turn into a fucking wolf sometimes, I guess. Or that train uh, game on DS. Oh, don't bring up the DS games. <laughs> and it and it has been mixed Some of them up. Are okay, but mm-hmm. it's like weirdly belligerently like has felt like it could not upset the basic structure of the thing, right? Like yeah. somewhere yeah. down below that meat, there's the basic skeleton that has been the same for decades. To the, to the point, like. To a ridiculous level where it's like, all right, grass temple first, then fire yeah. place, and then water place, and then, right, like, it's, it's some of that shit is so, like, incontrovertible, it is. And you're like, when am I going to get the hook shot already? When am I going to yeah. get the blah, blah, blah? Where's, like, the, where's the bow and arrow? Set. Right. So, for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, though, um, so that's all out the window. <laughs> 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 you, it, it. It's a real actual open world game and it's an open world game that succeeds in the, in ways that other open world games have failed. Like, let me start there. It is my biggest pet peeve uh, in open world games and pretty much everyone does it where you see a hill and they always tell you this, like, you see that hill? You could just climb up there if you want to. Like that's they the, said that the, in Destiny when leading up to Destiny's release, they made right. like a huge deal about see, that. See down there that planet? You could jump off. Yeah, you'll die. I mean, you'll die instantly, and you'll respawn. You'll be killed. Yeah, you you'll, be, you'll be killed by the architects. Thanks. Nice try. Though. Thanks. Um, <laughs> but it. But the actual truth of the matter is, as you start running up the hill, at some point you're not. You can't go up anymore. So actually, you're going to slide back down the hill, and that wasn't that fun. Didn't everyone enjoy themselves? Um, <laughs> maybe if you go at the just the right angle. And mess with the geometry. Yo, in the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, if you see something and and it gets too steep, you just start climbing it, and you burn stamina to do this. But like, you just start climbing it, and that's everything. Pretty much everything in the game that is a natural surface. There's some, you know, smooth, you know, uh, manufactured, I should say, surfaces that are not climbable. But pretty much everything in the world is like you could just they'll just let you climb it. And yeah. that's goes beyond. That's not just like, oh, that's sweet, Nintendo. You made a shot at you. You made sort of like your fun, cute version of an open world game. Like, no, you actually made the most open ass open world game 
um, possible. It does the it, same thing with weapons and, and probably the biggest, one of the, the things that has been the most interesting thing about Breath of the Wild is making my peace with things that don't feel immediately good or right to me. Um, so for example, uh, weapons, when you get weapons in the game, every weapon you get is breakable and not breakable in the way that some games do it. We're like, maybe after a few hours, it'll break. no. A lot of the weapons in this game are pretty fragile to a yeah. almost comical degree. Yeah. I would say there's some very bad sword craft going on in Hyrule, um, but y- you would think they'd be built to last. But like at first it felt really bad because I wanted to get a new, th- when I got the boomerang, the first time you get the boomerang, you're like, Oh, what's up? Zelda <laughs> is back. And then the first time you throw the boomerang and it falls behind a mountain, <laughs> it lands and in a it's river and it's like, like, no, boomerang. No, it might you be actually have to catch it, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah, you have to press a oh, button to catch it out of the air. But also, oh, like it feels so good when you actually catch it. Like when you actually time it out right and you catch it midair, like it feels awesome. And by it's only found those moments because it's willing to throw out all the 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 pre-existing structure that has been in these games for so long and there's um thematically there's things that are familiar there's a lot of like character names that are that you're you know seeing again and well the whole world yeah the whole world has like spots named after shit from the entire zelda canon like yeah, stuff right. pulled from twilight princess and tingles wind waker island and, yeah and, tingles and, island and mount lanayru and yeah uh Farron woods like um a lot of that was pulled from twilight princess like yeah it pulls from it pulls from everything my uh, I, I felt the same way about weapons i i'm very i've talked about this on this podcast before like i'm very precious when like with my consumables in a game i'll reach the end of the game and have like a billion potions and strength upgrades and like do like because i am i don't want to spend that stuff i'm very afraid that i will be ill-equipped and so i worry about that but um you're always finding new shit and it makes you adapt and i also really uh you can upgrade how many weapon like slots you have and to me that was a good way of feeling like i was increasing like my my martial prowess like i didn't sweat it so much if i broke a spear when i knew i had like 15 other weapons in the in the reservoir um Mm -hmm. yeah i want just real quick about the climbing i know justin you mentioned the climbing earlier so we've seen climbing in a ton of games uh you know assassin's creed or uncharted they've been in everything why the climbing here i find so much more interesting is because before i start climbing a cliff and i never used to do this in those other games i would take a second and i'd look up the cliff and be like all right, based on my stamina right now, I should be able to make it to that little outcropping and then I'll chill for a second, regain stamina and like continue my ascent. So by the time you actually make it to the top of the mountain, it's like an actual accomplishment. It's not you just hit X a bunch of times and you made it. It like feels like you climb this mountain and it's super satisfying. And 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 trying trying to reach little flat parts that you can kind of see in it that you know you can stand on to catch your breath and you hit those parts with like a pixel of stamina left. It's it's really, really exciting every time. I was at one point stuck in a canyon because I've been chasing something stupid. And, uh, I don't know why, um, I was probably trying to get to a shrine or whatever. Um, but I got to the bottom of the Canyon and had this moment where I realized like, Oh no, I'm stuck in this Canyon. (laughs) There's really no. And if you don't find a a shrine to use as a checkpoint, then you're, then you could go a long way without and, and have to like redo it later. Um, so, you know, unlike other games where it's like, well, I guess I'll just, something i i don't know there was a very a real verisimilitude to the uh, realization that like oh i'm stuck in this canyon and it's raining right now which makes climbing nigh impossible so i guess i'm just gonna see what ha- is in this canyon because i can't get out right now um and it is the one of the very few games that because of that when i see something in the distance there really is a part of me that's like, I wonder what's over there. Yeah. I wonder what it is. I wonder what that is. That's um, that's that's the story of this game. And it's every time like I tweet about this game, I get 10 tweets from people who say the same thing, which is like, I go to this place, I see a tower in the distance. I'm like, I'm gonna go to that tower and get the fast travel point and see see where everything is on this map. And on my way to that tower, 
Or maybe I don't make it to that fucking tower because I get pulled away by like 30 things. I see a shrine there and I grab it and I see a weird thing that is definitely a Korok that I run over to. The Koroks are, by the way, some of the best fucking video game collectibles in the history of video <laughs> games all time, all time, all time. Um, there's so, 900 of them. There's so many of them. There's 120 of the shrines and each of the shrines, well, most of the shrines are like really sick little puzzles that are just the perfect the pacing of this game is perfect and it's a lot of it is because it's you do it at your own pace the pace is what you make it um but none of these shrines like overstay their welcome they're all like little little brain teasers that use the mechanics of the game really 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 well um and the korok seeds a lot of them are sort of the same way um one thing that we haven't really talked about yet is how you can do like any way that you can imagine combining any two systems in this game um, will probably almost certainly work and you can use it to great or at least hilarious effect. Um, my favorite example of this is, did you see the video that Nick put up on Twitter of how he oh, solved yeah. this one? There was one temple where you have to get this electricity from um, these two batteries to these two nodes on opposite ends of this big gate. Um, and you do this by using your magnesis power to pick up these big metal crates to complete the circuit. And there was one like metal ball or whatever that he couldn't find. And so what he did is he dropped all of his metal equipment. He dropped all his metal swords and metal bows and metal shields and then used magnesis to line them up from one, um, like one of the powered nodes. And he used the, um, he used all his metal gear metal gear to form a bridge from that node to the unpowered node and it worked the electricity traveled through his swords and boomerangs and bows and shields to to complete the circuit yeah it's amazing i mean you know i've seen catapults there's like a crazy bunch of catapult videos um i'm constantly blown away that like a game like that was always the complaint about zelda for a very long time is like Games like Skyward Sword or games like Ocarina are like very boxed in in terms of what you can actually do, shy of like if you're a speedrunner and you're beating the game in an hour and using hacks. But like for if you're playing it normally, like you know, oh, I can do this or oh, I can't do that. But it's a very, it's a pretty narrow box in terms of what your options are. And this game completely blows that out of the water to the point where you can think of things like their physical properties and if you just. You, you need campfires to um you can use them to roast things not cook them you need a a cooking surface for that but you use them to roast things you can also use them to pass time by sitting at them and if you can't find one in the wild here's how you make one <laughs> you take some wood in your hands and some flint and you drop them on the ground and you hit the flint with one of your metal weapons and that creates a spark that sets the wood on fire and then it's a campfire are you kidding me? Yeah. Zelda? Are like, you kidding me? That's the, in the Zelda game? The best it, shit is that metal attracts uh, lightning. Um, so oh if you're out during a storm and you're wearing metal equipment, you have to take it off. And so it's like a weird, like, um, it's like a weird debuff where if you're, if you're out in, the, in a storm, you have to only use wood gear and you're going to be like probably without a shield and um, it, it sort of puts you at a disadvantage or... You can take that metal longsword you have and hold it out like the fucking Highlander about to experience the quickening. And then right before the lightning strikes you, you fucking throw it at an enemy's feet and watch as they just get vaporized by light. <laughs> like, I can tell you a thousand things like this that just like work. It all just works. And it's astonishing and sometimes you have to use it. Like, it's not just like goof around Easter egg shit. Like, sometimes you have to use stuff like that so like sometimes you have to cut down a tree and set the log on fire and roll it down a hill burning up like a big grassy field full of moblins who will otherwise tear you apart because that's another thing this game will kill the shit out of you yeah, starting very, out very hard early yeah, on. if you get sloppy even a little bit it will it will bust your ass even later on you know i think the game does a very good job populating the world as you get stronger and get more heart containers stuff like that the game populates the world with these like elite tier enemies that get populated within the low tier enemies. So even if you go to the starting area, there's like a silver goblin that chills with like the normal goblins and he has like a thousand health. And so it makes exploring the world still engaging, even if you're like totally overpowered. I, I want to mention one other Zelda game because I think 
<clears throat> there's a tendency when talking about this game to act like it just kind of came out of nowhere. And Zelda was as rigid as it was during the uh, GameCube and uh, Wii era. But I think there's a debt owed to A Link Between Worlds, which came out on 3DS, Sure. what, four years ago? Three or four years ago? Uh, th- I would say three. Two? Wait, I think, it I was think... our last, it won Game of the Year on Besties, whatever year that was, and beat out Gone Home. So 2013. Maybe, I think. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think, obviously, th- this game goes much further in every which way possible especially in terms of like allowing for creativity and play. But what I think that game did do was it broke away from the kind of traditional Zelda thing that had taken shape around modern Zelda games of like, okay, it's an open world game, but not really, and go here and do this and do it in this order, and everything needs to play out exactly the same way, and there's not really any sense of risk yeah. and and exploration. And Link Between Worlds, the whole idea was you got dropped into this big open world. It was closer to the original Zelda, a little bit like the SNES one too. But there was also not just that exploration of being able to go and take on the dungeons in whatever order you wanted, but you had to buy weapons at that shop. And unless you had gobs of money, you had to rent them and it essentially had breakable items because if you died, you lost your weapon. Yeah. And I, I think they've, I, I don't, again, it's not like one for one, but I think a lot of the kind of QAing of this game of seeing, okay, are, are, are our fans going to be okay with the idea that your weapons are not permanent? Are they going to mm-hmm. be okay with an open world game where you're not directed and it's not all about the story? And that game obviously got, Tons of great reviews. I mean, it got the most important award of the year. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, I, well, I, what I'm saying is, I think this is how it happened. I think they were they were making a different Breath of the Wild. They wow. saw our we gave yeah, the best a game. link between worlds the best award. <laughs> they said, "Stop, stop, stop! We're going the wrong direction. This this is the way of the future." They listened to what we had to say. From that. They yeah. took notes. They took some notes. They expanded on the ideas. They created artificial versions of us to Ooh. debate games for all of the time that we had off, knowing we would come back together oh for God. this episode. And that's why they're releasing Nintendo Boys next year for the 3DS, and it's just four boys. You get to pick one of us and you take care of. Um, how, just how wild is it, though, that like in their first real major departure, I, I agree with what you said about Link Between Worlds, but like they, they took that lesson and like magnified it a thousand percent here. Like their first huge, huge departure from their formula was this open world game. And it, during this departure they made, in my opinion, maybe the best open world game ever made. Like they didn't just like walk away from this formula they've been using for two decades or whatever. They made the best game in this yeah. like, I think, I think it's the best. I think it's the best Zelda game. I think it's better than Link to the Past, which is was previously my favorite Zelda game. I think it's the best Zelda game. And I, what? I, I I just sorry. I just want to say this: the Wii U will go down as the console that had the best Nintendo games developed for it. That's what? Crazy. No, wait, 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 wait. Let what me. Are you in, 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 in the amount of time it was around, <clears throat> it no. created it created the best new franchise. Right, a Splatoon. That was like the first good. You, uh, you know, I have to go in like franchise. five minutes, and you start this stinkeroo okay. no, 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 of an no, no. argument. I'll make, I'll make right it really before. quick. They made Super Mario Maker, which is a very good deconstruction of, of the two good. games. They made Super Mario 3D World. They made very Super good. Smash Brothers, which I think is the best Smash Brothers in a long, long time. But basically, an upgrade from the last Listen, one. So I they wouldn't... made Mario Kart 8, which was without it's question good. the best very Mario good. Kart since what? Mario 64? Kart 64. Yeah. They're, and they made the new Zelda. Well, the new yeah. Zelda was made for the Wii U. Like it, it came out on the Switch, it, and that's like great, and it's very important. It was the game made was straight up made and it's the, for the, the Wii U. Is the reason it's a launch Switch game because there's sure. no way this would have been a launch game. Yeah. But it was. Uh, we didn't. We didn't even talk about the portability. Like I finished Zelda on a flight to like a four hour flight to Portland, and like that's pretty buck wild. Like this. This. Uh, it's the best. Like. I guess the best portable game I've 
I've ever played. It's going to be so hard to talk about Switch shit because, like, if this game had come out on 3DS or, like, obviously it wouldn't do this, but, like, on Vita, it'd be like, wow, I can't believe the scope and scale of this portable game. But, like, it is a portable yeah. game. and I it's, bring it on the subway, like, 100%. It's, and it's, and it's oh, this, the, the wild thing about it is that, and this is where I would push back thing. against the, it was developed with Wii U in mind, is that the pacing is very friendly to mobile gaming yeah like it's very friendly shrines you can bust out in five minutes um dungeons that are a lot more um what's the word i'm looking I mean, for they're, they're chunkable like they're they're much yeah, more they're, like a, a dungeon will take you a half hour at most whereas before and they can break down into components like yeah. in in a way that like the more labyrinthine dungeons in the past. Uh, I don't think that's not. a portable thing as much as Nintendo realizes that like Griffin, the world does not have time to like sink three hours into a game at all times. Right, right, right. We got time for but, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Another Wii U hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So I think our game this week is going to be Snipper Clips. It's just so cute. <laughs> this, uh, this month, and I think it's Zelda. <laughs> um yeah it's it's i mean it's definitely zelda and i i'm i i think it's so much better than horizon zero dawn like yeah was i think it's the, way 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 better win, yeah that, that was that's reigning? our current that's our current reigning champ it, it dethroned re7 which i disagreed with and i just i i think this game is so much better than, than horizon zero dawn because i think it does a lot of the stuff like a lot of my complaints with horizon zero dawn is just like i didn't feel pulled along by the game like i uh, there, i didn't feel much um i didn't feel like i was getting much more powerful as i like got the upgrades and i didn't really like care about like oh i need to get all the, the blue components so that i can get the purple bow and then i'll spend all my money on that and then get a better purple bow at the next fit oh, yeah. as, as opposed to like if i get um uh I, I need bomb arrows so i can like solve this one puzzle or like um i need this tunic that can help me survive in the desert so that I can go to this whole other other area. Like I, I always I, felt like I was yeah. getting more powerful as I played Breath of the Wild, and I felt like each upgrade was like a little key to a door, and behind that door was like more fucking cool stuff to it's, to explore. It's so wild. I don't want to take too much more time, but to dwell on this, but it is wild that this is a month where a new Zelda and a new Mass Effect were released, and the fact that the new Mass Effect was such a footnote, like. That's heartbreaking. I yeah. I love that franchise. Like what a what a God that stinks. It just stinks. It or maybe just I'm greedy. Stinks. But we it had a new stinks. franchise also launch and it's great. Snipper clips. Well, no, everything. Clips. I I I think Horizons. Your I agree. I think this is like better is a silly word to use, even though that's but, the whole point of our show. But yeah. I yeah I, I I would say it should be our bestie. I think they are. They they look very similar and they have similar stories in their open worlds, but I think otherwise, Horizon and Zelda are just completely different ideas of how to make this type of game. Sure, yeah, no. So I I, I think like it's it's really hard for me to compare them because I instinctually want to because they have so much in common visually and about their weird like nature's reclaimed Earth after technology yeah. was king worlds. But yeah, I. I Ultimately, I mean, like, I the combat Zelda. is better in Horizon Zero Dawn, and the story is better in Horizon Zero Dawn. Graphics, I think, are about a wash. If we want to get like down well, no, deep, no, no, the... come on. What are we gonna do? Talk about the fucking fun factor? No, <laughs> I'm just no. I'm just making the case that it's not quite the trouncing. I would say that I don't the... think it's a trouncing, but I think Zelda is like game of the decade like best game of all time like I, it might be my favorite game ever like there were maybe 30 times while playing it where i did something completely like random with like throwing a flaming boomerang at a cuckoo which like knocked off this chain of reaction that like killed another thing or i was like this might be my favorite game ever made it's spectacular um yeah, yeah. uh next month though <laughs> Oh, Persona 5 is going to come huh? out and it's going to be, yeah, J Russ is going to have to read, which he hates. I hate reading. Um, anything else next month that we're excited the about? The There's list. no way for it there to be time. time. You're going to be playing all 5 million hours of Persona. We won't know that other I games I really happen. am dreading. I don't have that space in my life anymore. Have you all been doing much of the um, Vita like play? Yeah. Does that work? It's all, I, it's all I do is remote play. Yeah, it works great. 
Um, and ukulele comes out next ukulele's month. Ukulele's next month, too. Uh, yeah, there's some uh, stuff. And Snake Pass is at the very end of this month, but we'll go up. Hey, all right. Bullet Storm full clip. Um, Mary yeah. Heart Deluxe comes I kinda out next like month. I kind of like the original Bullet Storm. No, the original Bullet Storm. The Bullet Storm was good. It was yeah. a good game. Um, I need to go get my eyes checked out before they won't let me in the front door. Because yeah. of how late I am. Check for my eye appointment. And I know you guys care about my good vision. And so um, be a maybe we boy. should wrap up. Yes. Uh, that's going to do it for us this month. I hope you like the show. And uh, do we say our names? I can never remember this part. Boy, howdy. We don't go a year between recording these anymore, right? <laughs> I'm just it's asking monthly. for a yes or a no. Not a lot of commentary. Um, just do we say our names? Generally no, but no, I don't want to paint now. you in a box. Okay, so my name is Justin McElroy, and these other people are don't get to say their names. And for all them <laughs> and me, <laughs> be sure to join us again next month for the besties, because shouldn't the world's best friends pick the world's best games? Besties!